So I wanted to do a really quick video to help those of you out. Perhaps um, you're having issues right now with your Amazon advertising. A lot of people are seeing a cost rise due to the lower conversion rates, um, which is a direct result of the longer extended shipping delays. Now, um, Amazon just announced this morning that there are certain people they're opening up uh, to be available to have new shipments. So we would definitely go into your Seller Central platform. You should see news link on the left. It'll tell you information about that. Um, that's where Amazon's going to update you all. That's a sidebar. Um, but you may have heard quite a bit of advice, which is good advice, that if you're going to be making extensive changes to your Amazon advertising at this time, just due to the current market, you're going to want to have a reference for after all the dust settles, because we're going to get through this and Amazon will return to normal. It might take a little time. It might be sooner than we think but it is going to return to somewhat of a normal. And you're going to want to have some sort of a reference uh, to the previous bids you had, the previous budgets, the previous campaigns that you pre uh, had enabled. And you're going to want to have a reference for that. If you are managing your advertising, um, not using bulk files and just simply inside of Campaign Manager, if you're still doing things manually, you might not uh, have a really good way to create an easy and quick reference guide. So in lieu of keeping a spreadsheet, um, doing any kind of crazy tracking, I wanted to show you guys how to quickly download a bulk file and the information that will be saved. And I'm gonna do a really, really quick walkthrough of it and um, what all the information is. So how you create a bulk file, if you've never done this before, what you're gonna do is inside of Seller Central, you'll go to Campaign Manager. By default, it'll go to this tab right here, which is Campaigns. You're gonna wanna click on this tab right here that says Bulk Operations. Now, to be honest, um, if you're only creating this bulk file for a specific, just a reference guide to the bids and the budget, the time frame, to be perfectly honest, is not going to matter as much. However, I would recommend you doing it within the last 30 days. Um, so you can either select right here, it's a date range. So what's going to happen when you create a bulk file is Amazon will put all of your current campaigns with all the current bids and the data into a spreadsheet. So they're going to condense it and you'll have it all easily in a spreadsheet. Um, whatever date ranges you select is going to be the amount of data they pull into that spreadsheet. So if you're optimizing a bulk files, date range definitely matters. If you're simply having this as a reference guide, it doesn't matter as much. However, um, it is a good idea to get a good extended range of data. So if you're looking at things like a cost um, clicks and all of that, then you'll have a more just a more thorough, uh, more extensive idea of what the numbers actually are versus if you did for a shorter date range. Um, you can also here, now if you're optimizing, I recommend doing customize and then um, going back at least 24 hours, even 48 hours, depending on what um, your parameters are. However, you could just easily last 30 days. Now you will want to uncheck this little uh, tab here, which is campaign items with zero impressions. Um, if this tab is not checked, then any items that have received no impressions, um, if the bids are low enough, they don't get any impressions, which in whatever date ranges you specified, you won't actually have that information in your spreadsheet, which um, so you would be missing some data, which could cause some problems. Um, so you want to make sure you uncheck that tab and then click this button, um, create spreadsheet for download. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different things you can do with a bulk file. This is simply, a, I just want to quickly show everyone how to create a record if you're making extensive changes to your campaigns due to the current situation and you need a quick way to reference um, what historically you had your campaigns at before you're making all these changes. So what it's gonna do um, eventually when this is finished creating, depending on how many campaigns you have, the more data Amazon has to put into a spreadsheet, the longer this is going to take. So under the status bar, you'll see it's currently um, creating the spreadsheet. Once it's done, you'll see this little button right here that says download. So what you're going to do is you're gonna to wanna to click on this button 
it will download the spreadsheet and it's going to open you can open this up in whatever software you want i'm going to just be using google sheets so what i've done here is i created a, just an example bulk sheet now i have changed um all, a lot of the data campaign names ad group names all of that however this data is um it is correct or it's directly from an account um so what is you're going to see when you open this up um is the first tab right here at the bottom, you're gonna see the portfolios. This is a list of all your portfolio names. What you're gonna need, is, so this is for sponsored products. If you have any sponsored brands running, you will see them in this tab. Sponsored display campaigns will be displayed as here. Most people are only running sponsored product campaigns, so I'm gonna go over this tab. Um, and if this is your, excuse me, if this is your first time seeing a bulk sheet, this may seem a little bit confusing. However, what I'm going to do is just simply walk through how you can look at this data and how you can get um, just your historical data out of it. So the main column I want to show you right here is this one, column B, which is your record type. Now what I've done up here is I've gone to view and I've frozen the first row as well as um, I've also applied a filter so I can turn, I can filter these particular tabs. So what this is, is you have right here your campaign. These are all your placement adjustments. So if I wanted to go um, say, I wanna see which campaigns I have enabled. So if I look back, say I paused a bunch of campaigns after I downloaded this, excuse me, downloaded this file, what I can do over here. So the different records are, you can have your campaign, campaigns by placement. That is the percentage adjustments you have placed on your campaigns. Um, if you're using top of search, product pages, et cetera. Um, you also have your ad group, and then you have your um, ads, which are where you place your SKUs. Um, so what I can do now is if I say clear, so I just unselect all of these and simply select campaigns. What I can do, so this is a list of all my campaigns. Again, these have been changed. Um, I have my information here. So then the other thing I can get right here under this um, campaign daily budget. So I'm only looking at all my campaigns and these are the daily budgets I have set for my particular campaigns. So if I say, okay, so for whatever this campaign is, campaign 38, I had set it to $30. Say um, this campaign is not performing particularly well, maybe it's a research campaign and right now is really not the time to be um, spending money on research keywords. I might have lowered this particular campaign budget to a dollar, a couple dollars, five dollars. Um, and then afterwards, when I want to ramp things up, I might want to know, okay, what did I have it at before? Because it might have been performing in the past. However, it wasn't currently, and I've since lowered that budget. Now I have a record of that budget. So I can look at, at the campaign level. Um, excuse me. Um, right here under campaign status. This is the status of my campaign. So I have my campaigns. I have a couple of them been archived. I also, if I see right here enabled, um, and I have some that are paused. So I could go here, clear, um, only look at the enabled campaigns, and I can say these are all the campaigns that I have, um, I had enabled at whatever date I downloaded this file. So perhaps I've decided right now I would like to pause a few campaigns. They're not performing. Um, as well just due to the current situation i needed to pause but maybe later on i want to go back in and enable those campaigns well i have other campaigns that are paused i might not have a really clear idea of which campaigns i have paused or previously had been enabled so right here if i sort under here by campaign status now you also have ad group status and you have this status applies to the keyword level so the other thing I can do is if I go over here, so right now we're looking at the campaign level, I can also clear this and I can look at, so I, if I had any ad groups, so I can look at the ad group level. And again, so this campaign status applies to the campaign and this is my ad group status. So I wanna uncheck all of the campaigns that are paused because you might be enabled at the ad group level. However, you would not be enabled 
um, if it's not enabled at the campaign level as well, those ad groups won't be running. So you wanna make sure you're only looking at your enabled campaigns. And then I can also look at all my enabled ad groups. So right here, this gives me a list. And again, you would see under ad group name, if I hadn't have changed these, you would know what the ad group was, as well as if I go over here to this campaign tab, I would know what campaign this particular ad group is in. So if I look at the row, this gives me um, my campaign name, this gives me my ad group name, as well as it gives me my default, uh, this is the bid at the ad group level, um, whether or not it was enabled, and I also have some metrics as far as how this particular ad group was performing. So, um, but this would give me those ad groups that were enabled. Perhaps I have a couple other ad groups that may not be performing as well. If I had paused them, now I have a record that I can reference as far as which ones were enabled. So the other thing I can do, if I look over here again at the record type, so we looked at the ad group, if I had any, this ad, so these are all of my SKUs. Perhaps I have particular um, SKUs I turned off for a little while. Um, so this is campaign status enabled. These are all my campaigns that are running. Again, if I uncheck pause, um, and these are all my ad groups that my SKUs are inside of. And then this status applies to the SKU. So the status can apply to the keyword as well as if I'm looking at the record type of ad, it will apply to my SKU. Um, so I can see right here all of my, if I uncheck pause because again we're looking at what our previous thing was we're running these I have now isolated all of my SKUs that are enabled so perhaps you've paused certain SKUs in certain ad groups just for this limited time and you wanted to uh, go back and reference okay which SKUs did I have running inside of my ad group so again you would look at the inside of this particular campaign inside of this particular ad group and then you would see the SKU number here now you Depending on how you've named your SKUs, you might have to go and you know look at your inventory and see, okay, what are my SKU names attached to different of my products? But you would have your SKU number right here um, if I hadn't have changed these, and then you would see which ones were enabled, and you can reference if you had paused any other particular of, the, uh, of your SKUs during this time. The other thing I can look at, so if I clear, we looked at the campaigns, the keywords. Um, so you also want to check keywords and product targeting. This uh, keywords will cover any of your manual keywords you're running. Product targeting is the ASINs as well as uh, any of the targets inside of your auto campaigns. So right now, if I looked here, I'm looking at all my keywords. I've dived down to the keyword level. These are all the campaigns that are running. Um, you want to go over here. So you're going to want to check again only in the enabled on each of these because that will isolate any of the campaigns that are running, the ad groups that are running, as well as any of the keywords that are running. And then also over here under match type, um, you want to unselect all of your negative keywords. So if I see here, so I actually can click clear, broad, exact, phrase, targeting expressions, and then targeting expressions predefined. Those are my ASINs and my autos. So if I select all those, um, this is a list of any of my keywords. And I can see now this now applies to the keyword level because we're looking at um, the keyword and product targeting. So this enabled applies to the keywords. And so if I had paused any of my keywords due to this time, now um, what I've been doing in accounts, just so I have a particular reference, I have been setting the bids um, if there's any keywords that I would like to pause at this time, but the thing is I, I really want to have a better reference. Um, what I've been doing is I've been setting the bids to say two cents because I never set bids to two cents. Generally speaking, if I'm killing keywords, I have an arbitrary um, number that we set internally. Um, but because I've set them to two cents, I actually know um, that that's just for this time. So that's what we've chosen to do in um, our client accounts is set um, a reference because now I don't believe I've done any of this account. This account actually is doing really well during this time. Um, so we're just managing as normal. However, um, I can go under this max bid column right here 
And if I had set anything to two cents, so say it's this eight cents, what I could do um, is I could clear this data and then only select the bids that are set to that amount. And right now it's only for a single um, keyword. But if we had set all of these to say two cents, then I could filter by, so this max bid is actually what the keyword bid is set at. So if I had um, paused anything through setting that very low bid, um, I would be able to isolate all of that here inside of this max bid column, and then I would be able to make changes um, if I had pulled a, um, so it wouldn't be in this particular file. However, I could kind of cross-reference it if I downloaded another bulk, bulk file with those um, current bids of the two cents. I could also isolate and see which of my keywords I had made those changes to. Um, so that's another thing that is possible to do at this time. However, so if you have changed any bids, this will be your historic bid. So you would be able to look, and again, I've changed these. So under this column right here, keyword or product targeting. Now where I've put keyword here, these will be your actual keywords. Under this match type column right here, um, targeting suppression predefined, that applies to any of your autos. I haven't changed these because those are um, the same across all accounts, so complement substitutes, close match. Um, but under the keyword here, so you'll see what the match type was, what the keyword was, what bid you have set for that keyword, your ad group, if this wasn't changed, it would be whatever your ad group name is. And then you would also know where to find it inside of the campaign. Um, so if you were curious to see which, um, what the historic bid was for that particular keyword before you changed it due to this um, this particular time. Um, what actually you could do, so if you're looking for a particular keyword, because we have these sorting filters, you could go up here, um, clear, and just say, I want to look for, you know, whatever the keyword was, you could type it in here, select it. Um, you could also go up here, filter by condition, conditions, text contains, or um, text is exactly, type in whatever particular keyword you're looking for here, you could find it within this list. Um, excuse me, if you looked, if you had changed any keywords across a particular ad group, you could search for the ad group in that list or search for the particular campaign and then you can get a really good reference for what your uh, keyword bids had been set at previously before you made any of these changes. So um, this was a pretty quick video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them underneath it. Um, this was just a really quick way. I just want to show you all how you can use a bulk file to find those um, historic bids and which campaigns have been enabled and paused if you're not familiar, excuse me, if you're not familiar with bulk files already.